time to wake up. My name is Daniel Vallis from InformedChristians.com, a website ministry devoted to discerning current events from a Christian and biblical perspective. Thank you for all those who send in tips and information and your thoughts and feedback and contributing to this watching that we are doing at this time. We are watching for our redemption because it draweth not. And a big thank you to all those who are part of this in encouraging this ministry and helping this ministry and helping bring together puzzle pieces that are very important. And thank you for your prayers, for strength and wisdom. It does make a huge difference. This video is a warning of what is going on in the world right now, but it is not a prediction. I do not know the future, but I do know the hour is very late, and we have heard the calls for peace and safety. That means sudden destruction is coming, and we see the events in the world indicating that that is very soon. Romans thirteen eleven, And that knowing the time, and now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. We've seen a lot happen over the past few days, definitely building in intensity with so many references that the enemy is getting ready. And of course, we've looked at the biblical patterns and the celestial signs pointing us to this time already, so we knew this was an important time. And there's still very significant shadows and patterns of the Bethel, Jacob's Ladder, Gate of Heaven, and the shadow pattern of Joshua and time as well, in addition to the second Passover. And we are looking for Christ's second coming when he will return in the pattern and shadow and the footprint of his first coming between the triumphal entry and when he left at ascension. So we have a high expectation. We do not know the day or hour, but the Bible says we will see the day approaching. And we see the enemy getting ready that they anticipate and see the day approaching as well. I was thinking today, we've looked at a cyclical view of the past year. And this calendar is in our Exodus 2 material. Definitely check out that resource section. But I had mentioned before, back in mid-April, late April to the beginning of May last year, is when the Lord gave our ministry, and even other ministries I heard make the same mention at that time, that God gave a lot of insight into time and its involvement in prophecy and the end-time events. God gave a lot of insight at that time, and a lot of puzzle pieces came together. That late April time period through May, and we've been pointing out a lot of events since then, but it's amazing that we find ourselves back at that exact same time period, about 45 days after the beginning of the new year. And we're back in the time of time change, with even Joshua, as we've learned, and the sun and moon, and that messing with the constructs of time. And now we're back in this exact same window, and it's amazing to reflect back and see how history rhymes, so to speak, but also God was calling our attention to that time for a very important reason. And we've seen a lot of enemy acts and building up over the past year, getting them ready for the concept of major changes in time. And especially over the past few days, we've definitely seen a huge ramp up of that. But it's amazing that we find ourselves back at this exact same time, laden with a lot more shadows and patterns that the Lord has even further drawn our attention to and given us wisdom about. In our last video, we talked about the Hennessy ad that just recently came out, directly referencing Alice and the time changes and time being stopped and all that we've talked about before. So it was interesting today, they put out on Twitter that they're announcing a new commemorative Hennessy number 8. And 8 is very important as a time reference. It figures eternity, a eternal loop turned sideways, mathematical infinity symbol. But they released this just a few hours ago. And the packaging is very interesting because it kind of hints at the concept of two pillars as well. But Hennessy 8, driving home that 8 concept, and especially in context of their commercial, which all is all about time and everything. And then when we consider it's in context of the same time as lighting the torch for the Olympic ceremony, which marks the 80th anniversary. And a lot of very peculiar messages going on right now. And of course, there's been ad nauseum about Prince. And they've been drawing attention to it and promoting it in certain venues to draw attention to certain themes at the Apollo Theater in honor of the beautiful one. And you could even take that as Lucifer, the anointed cherub. It's getting really blatant. Apollo. And we've, how many things have we seen with Apollo just this week? You know, they invoked him at the Olympic torch ceremony the same day as Prince supposedly passing away. This is not accidental. The whole world is a stage. And there's been different commemorative lightings at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome, different bridges and buildings around the world. The Niagara Falls was lit up in purple the other night too, but it is interesting because a lot of people thought it was about Prince, but it was actually to commemorate supposedly the 90th birthday of Queen Elizabeth. So it's very interesting how they overlapped the idea of royalty and Prince again, and purple, 
and with the distant connections of Scepter and all that going on right now too. Then even NASA, who I do not trust at all, they released a picture today of a purple nebula in honor of Prince who passed away. But this was the Crab Nebula, and it's not that color. They actually colored it purple in honor of Prince. The Crab Nebula brings to mind cancer, the astrological, even though it's not in the constellation, but it definitely brings it to mind, and references the Gateway 69, the merging of the two, which is just another form of purple. NASA. They knew what they were doing when they were coloring the Crab Nebula purple. NASA is not your friend. And a Ferris wheel at Las Vegas was lit up purple in commemoration too. This one was very interesting because this one is also referenced in the Black Knight Decoded, which we talked about just yesterday. There's a significant scene there where they show a smiling peace eyed smiley face with the Ferris wheel right there. And it's very similar to the London Eye Ferris wheel, which references Apollo. So this one was very suspicious that they did a purple one in connection to the Black Knight Decoded. And today is the full moon. So are they expecting other similar events connected to this to follow out soon? I do not know. But it is very suspicious. When the red horse of war comes onto the scene, the Bible tells us he's come to take peace from the world. And that's why he says, when you hear them call for peace and safety, sudden destruction is coming. So many events are coming together right now that are orchestrated. And it shouldn't surprise us that this Saturday, April 23rd, is Shakespeare's 400th year anniversary. And there's been several newspapers that pull the well-known phrase that all the world's his stage. It amazes me, but it doesn't, that at this time, with all the messaging we've seen in the media and everything going on building to this point, that they can even blatantly say and joke that all the world's a stage. It is a stage, and they know it. And they'll put it right in your face. All the world's a stage, and people will celebrate it. Which brings us back to Trafalgar Square, because they are getting ready to celebrate two events, St. George's Day and the 400th anniversary of the death of William Shakespeare, both at Trafalgar Square. Very interesting. So what is St. George's Day? Well, St. George's Day in England, remember St. George, England's patron saint. The anniversary of his death, which is on April 23rd, is seen as England's national day. According to legend, he was a soldier in the Roman army who killed a dragon and saved a princess. Okay, so we have a day coming up about a dragon being slain. Very interesting in the context of what's going on right now. And the Bible does talk about a dragon. Now this is very interesting. Church services on the Sunday closest April 23rd often include the hymn, Jerusalem, written by the poet William Blake. The words describe a supposed visit to Glastonbury, England by Jesus Christ during his youth. And that's described in apocryphal books. That, that's not true. But we have been talking about Jerusalem, and that's the song they sang opening the 2012 Olympics with all the ladenness of that. So you got to keep this in mind. St. George's Day, the Triumphal Arch, with the background story of Christ supposedly visiting England during that time and how they view England as a new Jerusalem, with all the other patterns and shadows of Palm and Pymira, all that coming together. They're definitely weaving a very interesting tapestry at this time. And we looked at the poem and him before when they sang it in conjunction with the orchestra playing Nimrod and the Maypole with all its fertility rites pattern and shadow there too as well. There's a lot of overlapping patterns and shadows. They're getting ready for the Nimrod Hitler type to emerge onto the scene. Now it was very interesting today that news was made that Facebook wishes the Brits a happy St. George's Day 24 hours early, which was today. So instead of announcing on the proper day tomorrow, they made this announcement, which hints and reminds of the dragon. They reminded them of it today, which was the 22nd, which is the full moon. So it's hard to say why they did that, but this was definitely done deliberately. This was not an accident. If anything, they are reminding them of the pattern and shadow and driving home that they need to pay attention to it more. But it is interesting, going back to St. George's, in the book Dracula by Bram Stoker, evil things are said to occur on St. George's Day beginning at midnight. And it's also interesting to play Jerusalem took place on St. George's Day. And also, it's interesting that the author, he died at St. George's Square as well, as writing about how it was a bad day. So... You know, we can't say anything will happen, but it has been interesting. There's been different mentions in media about strokes of midnight or the last tick on the clock type of thing. When the day becomes the night and the sky becomes the sea, when the clock strikes heavy and there's no time for tea, 
and in our darkest hour, before my final rhyme, she will come back home to Wonderland and turn back the hands of time. So they do seem to be alluding to this in a roundabout way. So we don't know if it will come into play or not. But it is something that we should take note of that they do associate that day with the clock striking midnight and things happening then. So just something we have to be aware of. There's a lot tied together that they've been building with the mystery of iniquity. Which brings us to the Titanic. And of course we talked about the foul play heavily suspected with that and even the novel Titan. And it's a picture of the Titans and versus uh, the Olympians. And But in the movie Titanic, of course, the main actor was Leonardo DiCaprio. And so today, he's the ambassador of peace, supposedly, with this climate change. So he was given a speech at the Paris Agreement signing where they talk about, oh, this comes at a critical juncture for the planet. They're tying these two together and they're using him for a particular reason. Have you ever wondered why actors are chosen to speak on social issues and stuff that they would normally have no concept of? Because it's to pull the psychological subconscious anchors that have been laid down through their Hollywood, bring that to the back of your mind while they're telling you and crafting what your view on things should be. So he's not there by accident or to look pretty. And we've talked a lot about the Leo connections. Back with the Academy Awards with the gold and silver, the melting and down referencing the golden calves of the Gods of Egypt film, which came out hours before that. And the Golden Silver Gates too as well. But then his tie to Titanic, which was just a few days ago, acting in the movie of that. And that's what he's very well known for. So that's definitely pulling up a lot of baggage from that. And now he's connected to the Earth Day Climate Agreement, which is goes back to part of uniting and getting the world ready for geopolitical climate change. All these are done deliberately. And going back to Titanic again... There's a lot of messaging there, and it was sunk deliberately, and we saw the references to the day that it went underwater, the same day that the Hennessy water ad came out. And we've mentioned Back to the Future before, and there's a lot of messaging and parables in that. It's basically a gigantic parable of the Titans versus the Olympians in Greek mythology, which is based on the fallen angels, where the Titans battle Kronos, time. And you can read more about this in our Time in Tomorrowland article and our Time in Back to the Future article, which breaks it all down. And then definitely watch our Time Sermon in the Bible video, which definitely gives a good breakdown of the whole concepts of time from a biblical perspective. Now, just a few weeks ago, a film came out called Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. This one is very interesting, especially in light of when it came out. It's coming out on September 30th, and from the water theme, you can already tell what the theme and construct is going to be, especially in light of what we looked at just the other day with the Hennessy ad. But the trailer starts out looking at the water, big ocean scene, and goes right with the theme that we've been seeing, water as time, portraying water as time. So then the very next thing is two characters are talking, and they're going to a special place. So they jump into the water. And we've talked about the pictures of water as a picture of going between dimensions, using it as a transit between dimensions. And that's how the picture is used. And there's a, several other examples that we could use too, but these are just the ones that we covered just yesterday. So they're going to jump into the water to go to their special place. And as they start descending and going to this place, they have this very ominous, sinister audio music playing in the background. Let me play it for you. There's a new Her descent as she's going down reminds us of the Skyfall introduction. Of course, he has his hands up. She has her hands down as above, so below. She's going down below. She's going to another world. And they're descending to a shipwreck, which looks very much like the Titanic. But they have it titled the RMS Augusta to divert your attention away from it and to make you think that, oh, they're not really referencing the Titanic. But the RMS Augusta was a real ship, but it was never sunk. It was taken to the shipyard and scrapped. So the fact that they name a sunken ship about a ship that didn't sink should tell you that they are referencing a different ship. 
And if you've ever read National Geographic and looked at pictures of the Titanic in there, you would recognize from the trailer, and the link's going to be in the description box, you'll recognize that it has some strong overtones of the Titanic. They definitely went out of their way to make it strongly hint at the Titanic, even though they put a red herring name on it. Now, they released this trailer back on the 23rd, just a few weeks before the Titanic, but very close. I think they did not release it any closer because people would definitely catch, hey, wait a minute, this looks like the Titanic. They don't want to get that much attention, but they released it very close and definitely within this time frame of when we've seen them really ramp up the time pictures and the call to gateways and going to other dimensions and the water themes and all that. So it's very close. And definitely notice that the Hennessy ad was the same day as the Titanic too as well. So the water themes there. So you could consider all three of these connected. The themes are almost blatantly all the same. So they're showing what strongly appears to be Titanic. They're descending down to the Titans, Titanic. And they show pictures of them going down through the dome and the roof, which the Titanic had. But notice how they make emphasis of the lifeboats. Definitely calling attention to the lifeboats and the lifeboat davits that the lifeboats are still there. People didn't pay attention when this ship went down. The lifeboats are still here. These people were not ready. It definitely reminds us we need to be alert and ready. But definitely hearken to the Titanic. They're going down through the main dome, which is over the Grand Staircase, which is even modeled very similarly to the Titanic. And we called attention to the Prometheus statue before. That is how they're coming down through the dome, through the Oculus, into this ship. They swim into this room. One kid has a bubble of air on his head. But they come into this room through the doorway and then close the door right when the song is talking about the end of the world. Very suspicious. You, you gotta watch the video. It's very disturbing. So they come to a special place and talk about peculiar abilities that they have and how they're not normal humans. And then the boy gets taken to this special place where they show him other people with special abilities. And right away when you look at the house, you may recognize a very distinct architectural style of the arches. Very similar to the Palmyra arches. Hmm. Very suspicious. So then the boy goes to enter into the doorway and he passes by a figure that hearkens to Mercury. Nothing is accidental in movies, by the way. Nothing. So he's going through the doorway, passing Mercury, who is the messenger to cross dimensions, and so much more here. But this character, if he looks familiar, he's from Hugo. The movie Hugo, which was all about time. The kid basically lived in a gigantic clock. In Paris, multiple references to the Eiffel Tower, references to a key, which they really needed. A key in connection with clockwork. A big push of time. The Eiffel Tower references could even reference the key of David and Freemasonry too as well. A lot of, a lot of patterns and shadows here. But by having this actor in this film, they're pulling subconsciously all those same pictures of this actor heavily connected with time. They're pulling it to this movie as well, connecting them all. So this thing is all about time. One of the very next scenes, they show two peculiar twins who are supposedly identical, I guess, but they're bringing attention to them. Two twins, they're fighting over a teddy bear, so the teacher takes one and splits it in half. So they each have their own, but that's a reference to Solomon, which brings up a lot of clues that this is most certainly about Freemasonry and the two pillars, the twins. They are blatantly acting it out in front of you that this is about the two twins, gateways, time, going across dimensions, doorways, all about the end of time, end of the world. They're acting it out right in front of you. 69, Cancer, the merging of the two, making peculiar people who are different than normal humans. That's what this whole thing's about. Of course, every time he goes here, he's going between the two pillars, right past the Mercury figures, who, it's really Irene who carries the staff of Hermes, Mercury. But it is no accident that these statues are right here. Then they show him a special book of peculiar history. Definite overtones of evolution. And they're hinting at the evolution of going to the next step. Blending the red and the blue. That's what they're doing. It's getting down to messing with DNA and creating demigods and you shall be as gods. And that implies literally reworking your DNA. But you can see right there on the cover direct references to Mercury and also the intertwining of DNA is also what it entails to as well. But then the Star of Rem fan, so much. They're blatantly telling you what they are about to do. Then toward the end of the trailer, the teacher transforms into a bird, very much Phoenix-like. Transforms right in a large blatant gateway right there, gateway arch. So blatant. And of course... This underwater dimensional gateway, changing DNA, evolution, peculiar people. 
comes from the visionary director Tim Burton. And Tim Burton was the director of the first Alice film. Alice Through the Looking Glass is the sequel to it, but he was the director of the first one. So definitely tying together all these water as time and gateways, all of that, it's all tied together. Satan is preparing his disciples and telling them quite blatantly the end of the world is coming. And we're about to take it to a whole new level. The arch in Palmyra in Trafalgar Square was a major message. It was a major message and reminder of the gateway concepts and to bring together and tie together everything that Satan's been telling them about and warning them about, basically letting them know, just like the triumphal entry, a few days before it actually happens, this is the grand entrance. It's the announcement of the grand entrance is about to happen. And this is what they've been getting ready for for over a year. Back at the 2015 Super Bowl is when they acted it out and told their disciples this is what is about to happen and made clear with commercial a few days before that is connected to time. They're going to bring a king figure back from time and references to 666. And we talk about this in our Time Zone in the Bible video. But back in our enemy action video, which was in October, we talked about Back to the Future. We talked about a lot of distinct signs from the enemy action. And we talked about and laid it out how the enemy had been building over the past few months since January through October, just what they had been building. And you could see a distinct theme being built from the time when they launched the Super Bowl halftime show and the halftime commercial at about a month or so before that. So look at this timing right now. They launched the commercial about the turn of January, really back in December of 2014, but then it went through January, but then the actual halftime show was February 1st. Keep that in mind. February 1st is when they had the halftime show, when they showed coming through the gateway. Someone shared this with me today, I'd never seen it before, but on February 4th, three days after the halftime show, this is very important, keep in your mind everything that happened at the halftime show. And then this came out three days later when all that stuff is still fresh on people's minds of the beast coming through the gateway, the portal, dimensional particles and all that and the falling away to his message in there too as well. But then three days later comes out this commercial by Honda and it opens up with a guy in a cafe having a dream and he's reading a book called Lucid Dreaming. And that is basically where you're awake while you dream and you're aware that you're dreaming and you can manipulate your dreams. That's what lucid dreaming is. But when we look at the book, it's obvious there's all seeing eye books. Hello. And there's a gigantic eye on the book too as well. So this entire movie, he's in a dream state and he realizes that. And he goes outside the cafe and there's these two men out there named Rise and Shine. And they're yelling to him to wake up. Wake up. Now consider this is three days after the Super Bowl halftime show when they just told the world that the Antichrist, the beast, is about to emerge onto the scene through a gateway. And now they have this advertisement about a guy dreaming and it's definitely put out by the enemy, definitely connected to the mystery of iniquity. And they're telling this guy to wake up. And notice what building is in the background. It's a pharmacy. Pharmacia. And the Antichrist is going to be promoting that. Drugs are used a lot in the occult and reaching certain dream states and everything. So they're putting out this message to wake up. Wake up. People are sleeping. Now is the time to wake up. Satan is giving legal notice is what he's doing. So they're yelling at him to wake up. He starts running, morphs into the inside of a car and starts driving away. And I thought it was interesting. We just talked about tea the other day because the cafe is called Cup and Saucer. So he's driving away, but they're still yelling at him, wake up. And they're chasing him, and they continually tell him, wake up, wake up. But he wants to stay in his dream state. And he has a dog companion, who is like the consort, maybe a reference to Sirius as well. But they are yelling at him the entire time to wake up. And they pass a bridge, a highway. We talked about that. The pictures of a dimensional highway to the other world. The connections with Jacob's Ladder. The Gate of Heaven. This is what they are expecting. And notice there's two pillars as well. They're telling them to wake up. These are coming. They know a gateway is in the future. It's almost here. It's not done yet. But it's coming. But he keeps on driving and driving. And they're yelling. And they're using all means that they can to tell him to wake up using these large horns, these large trumpets, chasing him down, using helicopters, telling him to wake up. Then they start setting up a roadblock with even larger trumpets, telling him, wake up. And they have a gigantic clock there with church bells, telling him it's time to wake up. Now, let me ask you a question. 
Who do you think they're telling to wake up? It's not the guy in the car. It's a bold legal statement that the church needs to wake up. The hour is late. The church needs to wake up. And he has it right here blatantly in our face. But he knows people won't pay attention to it or they won't heed it. But he's serving legal notice. Church, you need to wake up. We're expecting to go through the gateway, the doorway. Church, wake up, wake up. And there's been a lot of warnings from different watchmen and prophets over the past few months, and even this ministry too as well, warning you, this is the time to wake up. It's high time to wake out of sleep. Will we continue to live in a dream state and refuse to wake up, or will we wake up? And they use so many trumpets. The trumpet call at midnight to wake the virgins up. Let them know the bridegroom cometh. He's nigh even at the doors. But the driver does not want to wake up. He just continues on his course, ignoring the warnings. He's given an out. He pushes a button and that opens up a garage door next to them. And guess what comes out? Water. Surprise, surprise. A gateway opens up through water. He comes out onto another world and guess what he just drove through? The Triumphal Arch of Palmyra. And they published this on February 4th, 2015, three days after the Super Bowl, right after they told you they were coming through a gateway. They just showed you they're working on the dimensional gateway. This has long been planned to use the Triumphal Arch as a signal. They are about to open the gateway. So then the guy wakes up, still reading the same book, still having the same dog companion, Sirius Canis, still there. And the commercial ends with the car again, and he realizes he's not awake yet still. And he's going outside, but just look at the scene. How many twin pillars do you see in that scene? Two windows in the garage wall, two posts at the mailbox. All the trees are twin pines which definitely reminds us of Back to the Future. This is what they've been warning their disciples and even telling the world blatantly. You better wake up. This message is for the church. And Satan is giving legal notice by all of these media messages. And he will use it against many Christians one day as evidence as their accuser of why they should not be raptured. Because they're a hypocrite. They won't even wake up when Satan tells them to wake up. Romans 13 again, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. When we hear the warning calls and the trumpet calls at midnight telling us to wake up, what do we do? Do we ignore and go on with our life, not changing anything? Do we get rid of things in our life? Do we change direction in our life? Do we wake up? Do we know what time it is? When we know what time it is, that is the call to wake out of sleep. We should be waking up. We should be doing things differently, not living in a la-la fantasy world like things are going to go on. It's time to wake up. Satan's disciples are more alert and ready than most Christians are because they know what time it is. They aren't sleeping. Why are Christians? Today, another Independence Day Resurgence trailer came out. Surprise, surprise. And this is the scene it starts off with, with one of the major stars and what I take to be an allusion to the magic school bus. But notice the kid on the left there with his key. They're drawing attention to the key with contrast. It's done for a reason to draw attention to it. And definitely harkens to the Yugo time key, the CERN LHC key, which is hinting at the key to the bottomless pit. They are trying to open a gateway, and they know they are very close. They know what time it is. And the trailer goes on. Showing and lining up the Washington Monument with the capital, the phallic symbol with the womb symbol. They know there is about to be a birth. They know we are in the final stages of the birth pangs. And we've talked about this and they just modeled this with Trafalgar Square too as well. And drawing attention to it. Supposedly they hear a distress signal which means the aliens are coming to Earth and all that. They show scenes of destruction. Now this is very interesting because they elaborate a little bit more on it than they did in previous trailers, but they point out that all the structures are being pulled upward and that the enemy crafts actually have their own gravity. So everything is being pulled upward. And what did we just see just yesterday with that commercial? Things being pulled upward which should not be, be pulled upward. So then they talk about what goes up must come down. And I think what they're portraying is the world being turned upside down in a sense. When the Antichrist comes onto the scene and the four horsemen come onto the scene, the Bible tells us, 25% of the world is going to die. The world is going to be turned upside down, metaphorically speaking. And they show portions that were pulled up being dropped back down on guess where? 
our favorite location, Big Ben, the London Eye, the River of Time, Thames River, and you could see Trafalgar Square off in the distance. So they're drawing our attention back to the same place that they've been drawing a lot of attention back to because there's a lot of patterns and shadows that they're laying down here, especially with the river as time, Apollo's eye, time with Big Ben, even the shard, the illuminated pyramid, and the London Bridge, the two towers, the two pillars, Trafalgar Square, the pillar, the womb, and the triumphal arch right now. A lot pulling together, so there's a reason they're pointing directly to this place. And they're pointing straight at it, too. Of all the places in the world to have this trailer on, they show this place, London, right at this particular spot. And they make sure you can see the London Eye, the Eye of Apollo, real clearly. As you see the phallic symbol of the skyscraper, the tallest one, by the way, come crashing down right next to it. They show pictures of ships being destroyed. Satan knows what the Bible says about the shipping being destroyed. A third of all the ships will be destroyed in some of the first waves during the tribulation. The world is going to see incredible destruction, and Satan knows it, and he's preparing the world's mind and conditioning to what they are about to see. Then they show the same scene with the person with the white coat almost missing the evacuation. This time they clarify and add just a little bit more that they apparently just barely got rescued, maybe. Right in the midst of a destruction as a wave of destruction is about to come down on where they are. Again, it's a reminder for us as Christians. The parable of the ten virgins in the scripture is for Christians. Jesus was talking to his disciples when he told it to them. We need to be where we're supposed to be and be ready when Christ returns. Again, they make references to Cernernos and Pan, the horn god of the underworld. How he's going to be connected to all this. And then again, they take us to the River Thames. And they fly down the River of Time, the River Thames, right where they showed the Four Horsemen of Apocalypse several months ago. They fly down the River of Time, have the Eye of Apollo, Big Ben off to the other side. Because they're showing all these are connected. These are coming into play very soon. And they make sure you can clearly tell the Eye of Apollo very well. We've seen a lot of references to that in the past few hours with the prayers to Apollo at the Olympic lighting ceremony. And then they show the London Bridge being smashed. And what they show crashing down on it are the Petronas Towers, two twin towers, two pillars crashing down on the gateway, the bridge, the two pillars, the two towers right here as well, showing these concepts are connected. There is about to be a gateway open and there's about to be a lot of destruction. These are not accidental shadows and patterns that they're blending and showing and walking you through right on the river of time. Sudden destruction is coming. The Bible tells us that Christ will be coming when the world, they're eating and drinking as though life goes on. When they're buying and selling, the economy hasn't collapsed. There's food on the shelves. People are going to be planning and building as though there's a future still. People are going to be marrying and giving in marriage. No problems that they see on the horizon. Living as though life goes on. And Christ said that is when he is coming back. That is when he is going to be revealed. Right before all that changes. But right after he comes, the enemy is going to be unrestrained and sudden destruction is going to come. It's going to come as a snare, as a trap. It's going to spring suddenly as soon as he comes and evacuates his ready and watching bride. It's all going to hit the fan. Sudden destruction is coming. And when we see the enemy right now warning us through multiple media messages within the past few hours and days telling us that the end of the world is coming and they are about ready and this is exactly how they're going to do it and opening the gates and destruction and all that tied to time and London specifically, the patterns that they keep bringing back to and the triumphal arch, the gateway there. They know what time it is. Do we? Are we living like Christ is coming back? I was thinking today of all the channels that Satan uses to get his messages out. Sports, cars, vehicles, movies, TV, musicians, liquor. All these venues. He uses all of them to tell his message. And when we think about it, what is the world pursuing? They're pursuing all of these things. They're pursuing after cars. They're pursuing after liquor. They're pursuing after movies and musicians and sports. And he's using these exact same venues to warn them that he's about to destroy them and kill them. And he uses these same venues to warn them that their time is almost up and they need to wake up. They need to wake up. As the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Are you awake? Or are you living for this world? Are you refusing to wake up? Are you refusing to let go of the dream world that you're living in? Life is not going to go on. 
Our salvation is nearer than when we believed. Matthew 24, 44. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. And Jesus Christ is talking to his disciples. Why do you think Jesus told his disciples that they needed to be ready when he came back? Because most of them wouldn't be. And this is the warning that we have on the tagline of all of our videos. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be ye ready. Jesus told us to be ready for a reason. And what happens if we're not ready? What happens if we're not awake? Luke twelve forty five. But and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth this coming, and shall begin to beat the men's servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Jesus was talking to his disciples when he gave these warnings. He's talking about his servants, his disciples, his children. And he told his disciples, Be ye also ready when I come back. We are to prepare ourselves, like verse 47 says. And there's going to be a lot of servants who have not prepared themselves, who have not made themselves ready. They did not want to wake up. They did not want to change how they were living. They did not want to rise up. They did not want to cast off the works of darkness. They did not want to put on the armor of light. They did not want to shine bright for Christ. And so Christ will let them stay with the unbelievers. The rapture is a reward for those who are ready. If you are not ready, you will be left behind with the unbelievers. Your appointment will be changed. Matthew 24, 48. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and shall appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again, he's talking to his servants, Christ's servants, his disciples. He says, if you are not making yourself ready, if you are not preparing yourself, if you're going to live like this world and pursue after the things that they pursue after and act like them and talk like them and be undistinguishable from them, then I'll let you stay with them because you are a hypocrite and you will be staying with the other hypocrites. The servants that knew better, that knew they should be getting ready, that knew they should be preparing themselves, but didn't, they didn't want to wake up. They didn't want to cast off. They didn't want to put on the armor of light. That's a hypocrite. That's a grade A hypocrite. And Christ is watching us right now. Are we getting ready for the Lord's return? This video, all these videos that you've watched, you and I will be accountable for this information. Are we acting on it? Are we acting on all the warnings, all the trumpet calls to wake up, wake up, wake up? Stop chasing after the world at this late hour. Now is the time when we must chase after Jesus Christ, when we must rise up like the wise virgins. When they heard the trumpet call, they rose up. They went out to meet the bridegroom as he was coming. They were more interested in chasing after him and pursuing him and things of eternity than staying where they were. What about you, Christian? Are you comfortable where you're at? Are you comfortable being a mediocre Christian? Not shining bright for Christ, just being lukewarm? Are you shining bright for Christ? Are you shining dimly for Christ. Read the parable of the ten virgins. It's two Christians. We have articles on our website, Five Lamps Gone Out and Beware the Tribulation Snare. These warnings were for Christians to his servants, to his disciples, not the world. He was telling them, I'll leave you with the unbelievers if you don't do this. It's not for the unbelievers. It's for the Christians. Friend, I want you to be ready. I don't want you to be caught in the tribulation snare. I don't want you to be caught foolish and unawares and unready and unprepared. I want you to be ready. I want you to cross the finish line to the smile on God's face. That's why we make these videos. It's not for more of your curiosity. It's to tell you and remind you to wake up, to cast off the works of darkness, to put on the armor of light. Because our redemption is nearer than when we believed. He's nigh even at the doors. And even Satan is telling you that too. What are you doing? Are you waking up? Are you spending more time in the world right now? Or are you spending more time in the Word? More time with God? More time in prayer? More time on things that matter for eternity? We don't know how much time we have. We don't know the day or hour, but we can see the day approaching and we can see that we are there. We can see that He is nigh even at the door. Are you ready? Are you living like the bridegroom is coming? Are you living like you love Him? 
If you haven't yet, download our book, Exodus 2, The Bride Goes to the King's House, which covers the patterns and shadows in Scripture of how Christ wants us to live like a bride who's getting ready for her bridegroom to return. In the back, we have some good reminders from Scripture of things that we should be pursuing in our life, how we can prepare ourselves, like he told us, be ye ready, prepare yourself. So definitely download it. There's other articles and resources in that section too as well. Link in the description box. If you haven't yet, watch our video, The Letters to the Seven Churches, where Christ gave love letters to each of the seven churches. Most of those churches, five out of seven, he had some very harsh criticism to say because they were not ready. And he had to very bluntly remind them, be ready or else. Those are given for our example. And he says there's a blessing to all those who read it and heed it. So definitely watch that video as well. Romans 13. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Be ye also ready. Be ye also ready. Maranatha.